absolutely magical in this place. It always seems to work out our way. And they've got the numbers to prove it. This dog pound, the student section guys, they're hostile, they're relentless. What's up, Saluki Nation? Welcome to In the Dog Pound with Coach Mullins. We got Marcus Domask here. Marcus, what's going on? What's up, Coach? <laughs> I want to start with the Milwaukee Bucks. Oh, they're the best they beat team the heat. They beat the Heat. Mm -hmm. And then you tweeted, we want the Nets. And we did. We wanted them. And they them. were down 0-2 when they were healthy. Mm -hmm. And you were still confident? Oh, yeah, I was confident. I was very confident. I'll never switch And once KD made that shot, and luckily his foot was on the three-point line, were you still confident heading into overtime? Because guys on the team <laughs> mentioned to me that you and Dalton Banks were not confident anymore. I mean, obviously, I'd rather have missed the shot than win the game. Correct. I just, it was a roller coaster of emotions, and I didn't know if I could make it another five minutes. And then you went to the national media and tweeted at the coaching staff and the <laughs> players that people owe you apologies. Yes. Even though you lost confidence in them. And just so everybody knows, I have not received many apologies. <laughs> and I think I deserve more. But mm -hmm. Interesting. So you're picking them to win the finals? Oh, yeah. Sweep. Sweep? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, it's been two years since you've been in the program already. Uh, I remember going to your family's house, eating pizza with you guys on the dining room table, yeah. having you to the uh, official visit down here for the weekend. And, you know, one thing that stuck out about you for me was, you know, that you wanted to be somewhere where the program was important to the community and the community was connected to this program, you know, and obviously with your parents, you know, they want to be, want to make sure that you were surrounded by great people, you know. Was there anything through that process that really stuck out or made a difference to you, you know, why you came here in the first place? I mean, yeah, like you said, with the community aspect, I mean, one of the, one of my, like, check marks for school was to play in front of crowds. And obviously, COVID year, we couldn't, but my freshman year, the first year you saw the crowds, like yeah. the Missouri State game, the Bradley game, like we had a lot of people out and it was a great time. So that was definitely one of the biggest check marks I think that SIU had for me. Yeah, yeah. Obviously getting to know your parents, Patty and Dan, I mean, you are who you are because of your parents. And I know how close of a relationship you and your whole family uh, members are with each other. And, um, you know, you know, you have two sisters and a brother, right? You got Morgan. Mason, Maya, mm -hmm. you're the youngest of four. Yep. So for me, do, do you ever lose confidence knowing that you're, in terms of active college basketball players, you're the second best in your family? <laughs> now we're just lying. <laughs> no, we, <laughs> Maya average is almost a double-double. She's a better rebounder than you. Okay. She rebounds more than me. If we went to your whole family with Mason and Dan, you could be like the third or fourth <laughs> best player in your family. Is that true? No, that's not true. That's not true. Well, this is called In the Dog Pound. And, um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, that first year, like you mentioned, you know, the atmosphere that we had um, in here in the arena in the Banterra Center, you're one of the few guys that, that has actually been in the dog pound because of that shot against Missouri State. Yeah. You know, in terms of, you know, obviously we ran that play every single day in, in all of our shoot arounds and stuff like that. When you caught the ball, and you released it, did you think it was going in? Yeah. Were your eyes open? <laughs> I don't think so. But you thought Dang. it was still going in? Yeah, well at first I just tried to get, because I kind of jumped into him a little bit, tried to get a foul, because I'm going to hit my free throws. Yeah. But they didn't call the foul, so I just let it go. And it was online, and I kind of backed up, because like, I thought it was going in, and it did. I don't know how I hit it, because it didn't feel good off the release, but. When it was online, I said, oh, yeah, that's got a chance. <laughs> and when you turned and you looked at, you know, the whole side of the arena going crazy and then into the student section in the dog pound, what was that like? Oh, that was nuts. I had to, Ronnie grabbed me, and I thought I was going to fall, so I was really just focusing on not falling because I didn't want to get trampled. But then eventually when I got my eyes open and I looked up and everybody started surrounding me and stuff like that, that was, that was special, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh. You know, the, the place is crazy, and obviously not being able to play in front of fans this past year. You know, this year was so unique, your sophomore season, for so many different ways. And then at the end of December, we go to Butler, and, you know, I could tell just the way you guys were preparing for that game, how excited you guys were to play there. Yeah. 
what, you know, in terms of your guys' mindset throughout that game and then, you know, after in the locker room, what was that experience like to win at Butler and break, you know, their nation's long uh, home court winning streak? Yeah, that was awesome because, I mean, people just didn't expect that out of us. Yeah. You know, going into a high major, well-established program like Butler, I mean, we're not supposed to win to the outside, but obviously yeah. in our locker room, we all believed that we were going to win. So, I mean, that was a special moment that I think we'll always all remember. Yeah. You know, obviously after that game, moving on into the season, you know, about a week later, you know, you kind of go out for the rest of the season with, yeah. with the injury. And I know, you know, to sit there and watch, watch us play the rest of the games without you was extremely you know, challenging. Is there anything that you learned through that experience that you think will help you become a better player or will help you have success in these next couple of years? Uh, I mean, it's kind of cliche, but like just like not taking stuff for granted. Yeah. Because I never really had a major injury like that before. I'd never missed a game all of high school, all of freshman year. So I just went out every day and hooped because it's what I did. But when I couldn't do that, like I realized how much I actually like to play <laughs> and like to compete and stuff. So, I mean, I just try to remind myself every morning about like what it felt like in my lowest time during my injury. Yeah. So every day I go out, I compete because yeah. it, it's just something I couldn't do for the longest. You know, obviously I had a stress fracture my junior and senior year, and I missed the second half of my senior year. And, you know, I remember, you know, you had a moment at Loyola that was really tough for you. And for me, you know, I had that same moment when we were playing Creighton my senior year, you know, and we always met before, the night before the game as a team. And obviously I couldn't play in the game. And, you know, as players, we'd speak to each other and what we need to do to win, what we need to do to compete. And that was the moment for me, you know, not being able to play against Craig in my senior year, where I kind of broke down because of how much I wanted to be out there to help my team. Mm -hmm. You know, and I could tell when we were at Loyola playing against a top 25 team in the country on CBS, on ESPN, you were going through that same phase mentally. And it was because of how bad you wanted to be there for your teammates. Yeah. You know, and that's something for me as a player that I'll never forget just how much not so much you personally succeeding, but helping your team succeed means yeah. to, you know, someone like yourself, you know, and um, I know how frustrating this past year was, but, um, you know, obviously you've done an incredible job the last couple of months to get back in shape and, you know, your best basketball is still ahead of you, you know. The Loyola game, like, that was tough for me to miss out and just because those are big games that as a player you obviously want to compete in and just missing the whole end of that season was tough, but... I mean, I've been out for a while and I've had time to like refocus and stuff. So, I mean, I'm just excited to get back on the court with my guys again and just compete in front of the fans. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to play a little thing called 0.5 seconds. <laughs> All right. All right. You know what 0.5 seconds means in our program? Yeah. What does it mean? When you catch the ball, you got 0.5 seconds to pass, shoot, dribble, make a decision. Quick decisions, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you got to make some quick decisions right now. All right. All you got right. it? Yeah. All right, favorite TV show? Uh, the Office. The Office. Yeah. All right. Best meal you cook? Uh, chicken and quinoa. Chicken and quinoa? Yeah. No vegetables? No, nah, I'm not a big veggie guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Best chef on the team? Me. You? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm definitely taking the credit. If I'm not giving it to me, I'll go Siku, but I take pride in my No cooking. JD love? No. <laughs> he thinks he's a chef, but it's just not there yet. He's not there yet. I got gotcha. you. All right. Best player or coach that you've ever played against? Uh, Tyrese Halliburton. Let me ask this question one time. Best player or coach <laughs> that you've ever played against? <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> if, that's what, if that's what you're getting at. Tyrese not Halliburton, you. you're giving it to yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good dude, too, so I got to give him some love. I got you. I got you. Best student section chant? SIU. SIU? Yeah. SIU? Yeah. Best student section in college basketball? Right over there, the dog pound. The dog pound. Yes, right. sir. Thanks for coming out, Marcus. Appreciate you. <laughs>